Hey everybody, this is Whale Masher, and what I'm going to show you now is my Timber and Stone Beginner's Guide. Uh, I am by no means an expert at this game, I've only played for maybe 6 or 7 hours, but I've come across a lot of problems that a beginner would face and I've also overcome those, and I feel like I should share that with you guys because there's not a whole lot of content out for this game. Uh, go ahead and name your new settlement whatever you want, I'm going to name mine Tutorialville. I almost named it Whaleville there because that's the name of my Minecraft server. Uh, choose your map size. I'm just going to choose, lar choose large. Uh, feel free to choose small or medium. It's really all up to you. Uh, I'm not sure if choosing a smaller map would be better for uh, lower end computers. So here's the map that is generated for us. It's got a lot of water and a little bit of land over here. It's actually about a little, maybe 60, 60, 40 or something like that. So on the bottom right hand corner you see that it shows you a legend of what the different colors on the map represent. It also shows you a 2D view and a 3D view of the map if you want to look at it in a 3D uh, perspective. I typically don't use this myself because I don't really believe that it's a good representation of what the map looks like. Uh, I could be wrong but at this point I don't believe I am. Maybe that'll change at some point in the future because this game really is still quite new. If you go ahead and click anywhere on this map, you can choose a, spot, a place where you would like to uh, settle or settle down. Uh, I tend to choose the darker areas because it's a forest and I, and I tend to like having an abundance of trees. However, what I like to find are things that don't have anything that's rare. So this looks like, it looks like an okay place. There's a couple things that are abundant, uh, not overly so. Sometimes you get lucky and find you know that you'll have like six things on here that are abundant. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and confirm this location. We do not have any fish in this location because it's not near the water. Uh, if you go near the coast, then you'll have an abundance of fish, which is great for food. Possibly other things also, but I'm not really sure. Uh, right now we're just waiting for the, for the land to render. It takes a little while when you build a large map. So here's the map that I've, uh, that is generated for me. And if I don't like it, I can find a new location. I could go back and find a coastal spot or something like that. Uh, this is actually looking pretty good. There's just there's a ton of trees, which is which is great. Uh, the controls are very much like any uh, strategy game, uh, you know. And you know, right click allows you to turn around. And unfortunately, you can't pan your camera up and down. I'm I'm not really sure why they did it that way. I think we'll settle down right here. Uh, so we're gonna click on settle, and we're just gonna click on this blue spot wherever we want, and we're gonna start it up. When you start, you have six characters that you can use, and you want to fairly quickly understand what they're going to do for you. Right off the bat, I see that I have a forager, and so I'm going to put that to use and just start him doing his thing right away. Uh, what I want to do is you can click down here on this little info pane, and there's a lot of different options. So if you click on the info pane, it just pops up the unit stats here, and you can click on them, and it just chooses between these tabs. You can simply just click these tabs on your own also. As a forager, I'm going to give him some stone-tipped arrows and a short bow, and these are things that I've already started with. And then I'm going to go into the preferences and tell him to display his bow range when it's select when he is selected, so I can see this yellow circle around him, in, which lets me know what he can shoot. I'm also going to tell him to automatically gather berries and hunt for everything in the game. And then I'm going to click anywhere off of this panel, and that's going to disappear, and he's going to go off and do his own thing. Now, I can see that I have a couple of more characters here. I have a blacksmith, a carpenter, a miner, a farmer, and a builder. I think the first thing I'm going to do is take this farmer, and I'm going to click on his professions. All of these characters have the same professions. However, some of the characters will have different levels of professions. I'm going to make this guy a woodchopper. Luckily, he's already a level 3, and that's pretty darn good. You can see that when I click on his profession to change it, he automatically changes colors and changes into his new profession. As if, you know, same thing if I click on any of these. One thing I should note to you guys, or that you should take note of, is when you look at their level, you can see that right now Bruce is a level 3 woodchopper. If you go ahead and click on professions, actually, if he was a level 3.5 woodchopper, and you went and clicked on professions and changed him to a carpenter, and then came back, you'll notice that he's now a level 1 carpenter. Let's say you change him back to a woodchopper, and you come back here, and he was previously level 3.5, that half of a level will now revert back to simply level 3 and you have to start that over again. Now, when I was with the forager you saw that I went to his uh, equipment and his main hand and I equipped that bow and the arrows. Uh, actually the arrows were in his main and the bow was in his off. You don't really need to do that and you can simply click on preferences with some characters and automatically re-equip their best weapon. You can see when I did that that he automatically pulled out an axe. 
And I know it's a weapon, but I did mean the best quality item for that character. Independently chopped trees, I'm also going to select. And he's going to walk off and just start cutting down trees and collecting wood for me. The next thing I know that we need is a miner. And he's right here. So I'm going to get this guy mining the closest uh, stone that I can find. And that's this right here. Now, because he's a miner, I'm going to have to have him equip his items. So just automatically equip the best pickaxe by going into his preferences, just like I did with the other character. So here I'm going to actually show you how to select things in this game. And I know I might be going a little bit fast, but I kind of want to keep this short and sweet so you guys can get a good understanding of it just by rewatching the different areas. So on the top here, you have three different areas that you can choose from. You have design, and you have structures, and you have your resources. We're going to forget about structures and resources and just go to design right now. It has a sub-menu with dig and mine, build, farm, chop, roads, and halls. We're going to look at these two in a moment, but for now we're going to go to dig and mine. You can see that my cursor has changed to a red square, and that's going to allow me to select where I want him to do his work. I'm going to have him cut all of this down, all of this stone, and I'm going to start on the lowest part of, the, uh, of this hill uh, that I can, which is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and left click just one time. I'm not going to hold the click button down. I'm just going to release it. It allows me to make this massive selection. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to rotate my view over here now so I can get everything that I want in it. Now if I were to left click right now, all he's going to mine is the bottom layer, but I want him to mine all the way up to the top. It took me a little while to figure this out, but what you have to do is press your up arrow on your keyboard and it's going to move that up to the point that you want every time you press it. You can look at the bottom where my cursor is there in the middle of the screen and it says that I'm curr I currently have a 19 by 17 by 5 area selected. So that's really easy for you to keep track of what size you're making things. Simply just left click now and it's going to select everything there for him to come and mine. If the miner is close enough, he'll walk there by himself and start doing it, as will any character. But if he's not close enough, then you have to left click on him and select him. As you can see, whenever I select these guys, there's a light yellow circle that surrounds their feet. So with the miner selected, I'm just going to right click and he's going to walk to wherever I tell him to. So I'm going to make him walk over here and as he gets close enough, he's just going to suddenly decide, oh hey, you know what, I should go and mine this stuff. And that's great. The next thing I want to do is uh, find a carpenter and a stonemason. And right now I do have a carpenter, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on structures now. I'm also going to click on workshops. You have the options for doors and furniture and military, for siege craft and lighting. But right now all we really care about is workshops. I've already uh, shown you how to uh, do the mining and now I'm going to show you how to make a carpentry bench. So what it requires is one carpenter and it tells you there underneath crafting requirements whenever you hover over something. A masonry bench for example requires a stonemason. So if we need one carpenter and we need raw stone, we need two of those, and we need wood, wood logs, we need six. We currently have nine raw stone and 12 wooden logs as you can see in the brackets. So we're going to click on that carpentry bench and we get this blue uh, uh, item that we can drop and that's the bench itself. You can see that I'm rotating it and to do that you just press your spacebar. Simply click anywhere you want him to make it and he's going to walk over and start doing it as soon as you tell him what to, what to carry in his, in his inventory. So let's find our carpenter. Click on his, his uh, preferences here and tell him to automatically equip the best quality hammer. And now he's going to walk over and make it. We also need a stonemason. And at the moment uh, we don't need a blacksmith. But if I have the items that I need to make some of these, then I think I might. So I think what I'll do is make this stone anvil right now just by selecting it and putting it down. I'm also going to tell him to select the best quality hammer. I figure I may as well have him make something if he can. It will mean that at some point someone's going to lose a level. And now I have to tell him to walk back because I accidentally clicked somewhere. The builder I don't need right now, so I'm going to go ahead and change him into a stonemason by going into his professions tab. Now that he's a stonemason, I can tell him to build a, car a uh, masonry bench. So I'm going to left click it and I'm going to put that bench right beside this one. Not for any particular reason, not that I know of that it actually helps with anything, but I just think it looks better. I'm also going to tell him to automatically equip, equip the best weapon and I'm not even sure if he has one. He doesn't have one available. So what we have to do now is we have to make another stone hammer. 
and I'm not sure if I can do that yet. To do it, I need to go to resources and I need to click on tools. When I've clicked on tools, I can go to stone hammer and see what it requires to build. It's going to require that I have one raw stone and one wooden log and a carpenter, a blacksmith, or a stonemason. So luckily I can make those. I'm actually going to add five of them to the queue. That puts it up here. And if you click on it, you can move these items up or down or remove them all together. I also know that the pickaxe is going to be broken. And in fact, it already has. If you look on the bottom left hand corner in the notifications window, it says that Bruce's copper axe is broken. Oh, you know what? That's an axe. That's not a pickaxe. However, the pickaxe is probably going to break too, but we'll make a stone axe first. So we click on the stone axe and I'm going to add two of those to the queue. I'm going to move down to the stone pickaxe and I'm going to add in one of those, or actually two of those to the queue also. I'm not sure if I showed you this, but you're able to track items up here on the upper left. It tells you how many of each you have. So if you want to track something, you simply click on it one time and then click on track resource. It shows it over here on the bottom left. And every time you do that, you can track something else. If you want to remove that tracked item, you can simply just right click on that item on this left hand side and you won't track it anymore. So this guy should start building fairly soon, but I'm not sure if he actually has the resources to do so. Let's take a look at what it requires to build that again and see what he needs. So he, he what he needs are four wooden logs right now. And our car, or our wood chopper is probably out trying to get those for us. You can see here that I don't have any wooden logs. Simply click on these menus to get rid of them. So now I have two wooden logs and our chopper is trying to get some more. And I'm going to move on to the next option here, the next thing that I think you should know about at this point. What you want to do is click on design and you want to choose hall. And you actually want to make a hall here. So it doesn't matter how big it is, but I think I'm going to make this one about 9 by 5. It's not super big, but yet it's not too small. And then I'm going to click on design again and I'm going to make a road. And you want to make a road that goes to the nearest edge of the map. Uh, I believe the nearest edge of the map is over here. And what that does, it allows for migrants to come into your area and uh, settle here with you. So I'm just going to left click somewhere and drag this, uh, drag this road this direction. And I'm going to make it three wide. The road kind of bothers me a little bit when I'm trying to make them. I find that uh, it's a little bit cumbersome and I'll explain why while I'm making this. You can't take the road directly over top of a hill like this. Whenever you try to, uh, it just stops. So I'll bring it up this way and I'll show you what I mean. If I click here and then try to drag it over, it's not going to work. We're going to Oh, and there it goes, because I went over top of a, of a bush over there that I couldn't see. So doing this will take a little while, but it'll be worth it in the end. And I do believe that you can make a one right wide road, but I don't know, I just never have. And I'm fairly sure you can delete a road too if you don't like where it's... Uh, maybe you can't, I haven't actually tried, but with other items in the game you can delete them if you don't like, uh, if you don't like them. And I'll show you how to do that also. So what I'm going to do right now is fast forward through this while I put this road down. All right, so now that I've finished the road, uh, migrants will be able to come into my town. And they'll be able to stay here and settle down and help me build things. As you can see, my miner has fallen asleep. He's obviously tired. He's been mining all day long. I'm going to bring this road up to the hall. And I'm not actually sure if, sure if I need to or not, but it's probably a good idea anyhow. I'm going to use the uh, stonemason, or sorry, the... Uh, oops, I don't want to do that, so just right click. I'm going to go ahead and build a structure here, and I'm going to go to the workshop, and I'm going to build a stone forge. Or is that what I just built there? Nope, here's the forge, and I'm not sure if it has a texture on it or not from another video that I was watching. But let's go ahead and build that if I have what it takes. And I do. So these guys are going to build this together. From what I can tell, anyhow. Now I don't need a loom yet. 
and the water barrel might be uh, might come in handy. <clears throat> excuse me, might come in handy. So I think I'll also make one of those, and I'm just going to place it right over here. So with this done, this is the basics of everything you need. It kind of gets you started in understanding how to play the game. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'm going to show you before I actually end here. And some of those things are if you go ahead and right click on a stump and say remove, then your wood chopper is going to come and remove that stump for you. It's really handy because I think that it starts to make a real mess. Oops. Remove stump. You can also tell it to not chop if you didn't see what I did there. You can say do not chop. You can also have him remove bushes if you don't want them. If you want to choose a different player and you don't know where they are, hit the square bracket key beside your uh, P key on the uh, keyboard. And it's going to switch through all of your characters for you. Right now I don't know where the forager is, so doing this will let me find him. And there he is. And right now you can see that he's actually skinning this chicken or plucking it or doing it ever, whatever it is that he wants to do with it. I'm going to go ahead and have him walk back over here when he's all done though. And I think for now this is probably it. There's some things I'm going to show you in the next video such as how to actually start building and making bricks and stuff like that. It's really not that difficult, but uh, there's a couple of shortcuts and keyboard uh, uh, combinations that I think you should know to make it easier. Uh, with that said, uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode, and I really hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a comment and favorite it and maybe give me a like. Uh, more than anything, I enjoy the comments and being able to reply to people. Uh, so yeah, please go ahead and check over my videos and maybe you'll like them. And uh, I'll continue to post these if I can.